Oh, no, well, let's here, get your piano out. He's here. Get Shall your I piano stay? out. Just David, David, David. David. Hey? Yes, morning, David. I feel we have something morning. in common, David. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. There you are. She's your accompanist. Sally she played Fantastic. Rachmaninoff when she was a child. I, I heard when I was uh, yeah. waiting over there. Yeah. Right. It's a Not as piece. well as you, though. Ah, uh, you know, I can't play the keys that well there, so probably <laughs> you got an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> this is the violinist David Garrett. One of the very much for having me. Good morning. One of the finest musicians of his generation. Played his first major concert just over 20 years ago when he was just. 10 years old. In recent years, he's also recorded crossover albums, including arrangements of Nirvana, Aerosmith and Led Zeppelin. David's moved back to his first love, though, now, classical music. And we'll talk to him in a moment. First, here he is, so to speak, in action. That's amazing. You couldn't Thank stop you. yourself, could you? <laughs> no, you were actually, listening and you picked up straight away. Of course. I, um, I really just uh, love this piece in particular. It's definitely one of my favorites on the album. And especially in the morning when I wake up, it's, uh, you know, the music I, I grew up with and I love to play. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Fritz Chrysler. Chrysler, yeah. Hander. Now, tell us about him and your respect for him. Um, well, the combination Chrysler-Beethoven came about in that way that especially he wrote the most beautiful cadences for the Beethoven Violin Concerto, which is the main piece of the cadences. album. Cadences? What do you mean? Cadences is, is at the end of a movement, especially the first and third, uh, a cadence means the violinist has the possibility to show, show off the virtuosity, and it's normally based on the uh, two main themes of the concerto, and uh, Chrysler wrote two wonderful cadences for the first and third movement, and um, so I thought the combination, especially since Chrysler brought the concerto back the beginning of the 20th century on the map, of uh, concert halls, um, I thought it was a good, good idea to bring both of them together. Yes, mm. and this is your first classical album for some time. Yeah, so for some time. Very, very excited, but good to, uh, and of course a big uh, challenge to the Beethoven Concerto, but a wonderful opportunity. I also recorded it here in London at uh, Abbey Road Studios. What are the challenges? Um, well, the Beethoven is Probably a lot of my colleagues uh, will agree, uh, the toughest violinist, not only from a technical point of view, but musically speaking, you, mm -hmm. you really have to know how to phrase beautifully. You have to have your own interpretation, but still, you know, try to stay as close, uh, you know, to the score, the original. Um, but it's, it's really a challenge, you know, to, to uh, sustain also the uh, momentum through such a long piece. When you go off piste, so to yeah. speak, and play things like Nirvana, yeah. Led Zeppelin, such. are there people in the classical world who say, well, actually, a man of your talent shouldn't be doing it, so he should be concentrating solely on I the I always classical. think a man of, you know, if you speak about talent, I think the wonderful thing about music is, um, you know, that you can do whatever you really like doing. And for me, classical has always been my home, so to speak, but I like to take vacations once, once in a while, you know. <laughs> so did you rebel a little bit against classical? I mean, did, because you, you were trained early, you picked up the violin at what age? Um, I was about four years old, yeah. Right. I wouldn't say I rebelled against classical music. I just really enjoyed performing, mm. and but that didn't exclude anything. But were you trained along a particular way, and then thought, you know what, I'm going to try other genres, and then um, I just loved listening to you know all the kind of pop and rock stuff, and yeah. I thought it would be also helpful for classical music, you know, to promote the instrument. Mm -hmm. And um, if I look into the markets where I actually released a, a crossover CD and then released a classical, it really did help also, you know, uh, promote classical music. So it that is. was always the, the main aim. Yes. You keep yourself very busy. I mean, is it 300 concerts a year? You uh, like about, about 300, yeah. That's, well, that's hardly any time off. Uh, yeah, but, you know, I don't consider it work, you know, for me to play and, and you know, go around and see cities and, and travel. It's it's a pretty good job. Yes, yeah, not a bad job. Yeah, What's your favorite piece to play when you get up on stage? Is there one piece of music that you think, oh, All right, let me play it. Oh, yes, please. Yes, yes go ahead. <laughs>
I have to play the Beethoven so. <laughs> <laughs> And that it's was Beethoven Violin Concerto. And it goes you, you, the full range of the, what the violin can do. Well, it's it. a wonderful start. Basically, it showcases if you can actually play the fiddle or not, because uh, it's, it's not that much melody in it. It's very written in the style of a keyboard player, and intonation is very much key, also phrasing to make everything very precise, so it's, it's a big challenge. There is so much joy in your face when you play Thank that you. violin. There really is. Well, I, I really like doing it. So, yeah, you yes. separated f from it for long, or is it with you all the time? Do you find it's yourself, even when you're not performing, do you find yourself just picking well, it up all the time? Yes, yeah. I really do. I mean, it's, uh, I, I breathe it. You know, I, I literally could not go a day without it. Mm. It's, I just feel bored if I do. Um, musicians, jazz musicians yeah. and uh, rock musicians in the past sometimes just sleep with their instruments. Jimi Hendrix used to take his guitar with him to bed. Presumably that's a very mm. precious violin. You I, can't I really do it, that. I, I would be scared that I, I crash it at some point. <laughs> but you have a very a little bit more fragile than a you, guitar. You do have a very close physical affinity. To um, it. Yeah, I mean, obviously you spend a lot of hours during the day practicing. So you know, also finding an instrument which uh, suits the player, and, and this one really kind of sort of belongs to me mm. uh, from the sound. And I really fell in love the first time I played it, so there's definitely a close relation. That's interesting. How many violins do you play before you find the one that is your violin? Well, first of all, you have, have to be very, very lucky that you find the instrument and also can afford it or yeah. have somebody to help you afford it. Uh, it's very rare these days because obviously the instruments are very expensive and normally for the budget of, of a musician uh, you know impossible to buy when you say very expensive what are you talking about for a good quality well, four or five million for a good <gasps> strad or granera yeah. pounds dollars euros probably euros i would i would wow. say but wow. it can be more interesting just hold your hand up for a second because those are very interesting rings, particularly for a classical musician. But presumably you have to have them on your right. But I can't have them over here hand. because that would kind of like uh, stop me from playing very well. So yes. this one is, you know, something which uh, I can have without, you know, the music being affected. Yeah. Well, it's lovely to have you in this morning. Thank you so thank you. much. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you for playing. playing. Just Absolutely. at the drop of a hat. Just it's been an absolute joy. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. Thank you. Just oozes out of yeah, you, and that's really all part of you. Thank you very much, David. Thank you, David. Thank you guys. David Garrett. His new album, Legacy, is out now.